Hey everybody, and welcome to episode three of the Diversity of Light series with me, Nasi. So this week, I wanted to talk about something that I always associate with summer, and that's an exuvia. But Nasi, what the heck is that? Well, an exuvia is the molt, or the discarded shell, of an exoskeletal organism. In this case, we have the exuvia of a aeshnid, or a large dragonfly. Organisms like insects, spiders, crabs, lobsters, and centipedes, they aren't like us where we have a skeleton on the inside. Instead, they wear theirs on the outside of their bodies like a suit of armor. The problem with this is that when you want to grow, you're restricted by the rigid suit around you. And so what's the solution to this? Well, you get a new one. Through the process of ecdysis, insects grow a new suit of armor under the existing one. The process of ecdysis happens in a few steps. First, the epidermal cells are separated from the cuticle or the exoskeleton. Then the old cuticle is reabsorbed and dissolved for its underlying nutrients. The final step is to build the new exoskeleton. And so in between the cuticle and the epidermal cells, a malleable form of this new exoskeleton is built under the old one. But then it comes down to how do you get rid of the old exoskeleton? Well, this is where the exuvia comes into play and what is called molting. Molting is a crazy difficult and dangerous process. It requires the splitting of the old exoskeleton and crawling out of it. This is so difficult and dangerous because most exoskeletal organisms have their respiratory system attached to their exoskeleton. This means when they have to molt, they have to rip out their lungs every time they want to grow. See these things on the exuvia? These are the old trachea or the tubes that the insects breathe out of. Imagine molting like you're trying to get out of a sweater that's too small for you. And if you've ever had to do this, that takes a lot of energy. Now imagine that, but over a thousand times harder. As you can imagine, this is pretty difficult. So much so that most individuals don't survive the molting process. Now this is due to a few reasons. Either something gets stuck when they're trying to get out, or they haven't eaten enough prior and so they exhaust themselves when they're trying to get out. And if all of this wasn't enough, because the end goal of this process is to get bigger, the new X skeleton needs to be malleable. It needs to be able to expand so you can grow. This means that once you get out, the old armor-plated organism is now very soft-bodied. During this brief time of being soft-bodied, it leaves them very open to predation. So when organisms are going through this process, usually they try and find a place to hide, or they use a means of camouflage, such as in the case of the caterpillars turning into chrysalis before becoming butterflies. Once they are safe, the hardening process can begin to occur. This process is similar to tanning weather, where they're exposed to air and heat, the outside cuticle begins to harden. And there you have it. Once all of this is done, the organism is outside of the old cuticle. The old cuticle is called the exuvia, and now you have a new, bigger bug. But because this puts so much self-strain on the organism, why burden yourself with that kind of pressure? Why would you turn yourself inside out, digest part of yourself, throw away your lungs, and become more vulnerable for a short amount of time? Well, one reason this is such a successful strategy is because of protection. Exoskeletons are made up of some of the most complex and strong proteins and elements to exist in the natural world. A lot of current research in bioengineering is on these kind of exoskeletons and shells to see how to create stronger materials for building sides and windows and all that kind of stuff. Not only that, but having a strong exterior allows you to evolve into shapes and forms that can become weapons or defensive mechanisms. Another amazing thing that this molting process allows organisms to do is a process called metamorphosis. Exoskeletal organisms can not only grow back entire limbs or entire body parts once they are going through a molting, but between life stages can completely change their ecological role. They can go from aquatic life to terrestrial and flying, such as in the case of this dragonfly. These changes can be so complete that the organism can become unrecognizable. Within my field of research of taxonomy, there's a great history of organisms being reclassified as something else because people didn't know that they were the same thing. But we'll save metamorphosis for another video. I hope that you really enjoyed this information. It's a small part of the marvel that is insect physiology, but it's one that I wanted to share before the end of the summer. Finding exuvia like this in all the shapes and sizes and forms was one of the things I loved as a kid. I would spend hours beside the riverbed looking for these kind of things and thinking to myself, what is this? Where did it come from? Now I know, and now you guys know too. I wanna to hear from you guys to keep making these videos better and better. Do you want to hear more interesting biological facts like this? Is there anything that you've seen in nature that you've thought, huh, how or why does that happen? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe. If you wanna see more of my furry antics, go check out my Twitter. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you later.